In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a remote panic button. Now, many people might be wondering, what is a remote panic button? Well, this is a wireless device that allows you to connect to a remote receiver, which would obviously be connected to either an alarm, a fire alarm, or anything that is supposed to get the attention of other people. And that's the reason why it is called a panic. All right, so this is a common format. You can see these are various remotes. Uh, the one that I'm going to be demonstrating happens to be this one, which is a large size IP rated. It's, uh, you can actually put it outside and it lasts, the battery lasts about three to four years and very hardy. I've had great experience with these remotes. Also, they're very obvious. If you have a look, this, this is a brick and uh, the size of this remote panic, which you will see in this video shortly, is uh, large enough, especially for people who uh, do not have good vision or if it's in a factory or whatever, whichever installation where you want it to be obvious, then this looks like a panic button. Okay, so what, what is required? You will need a receiver of some sort. Now, the one that I'm going to uh, show you the uh, video, the the installation, well, the setup of is happens to be this one, which is made by a company called Sherlatronics. And obviously, there are many companies that do that. So I'm just going to give you the principle of operation. So what happens is this is the main board, and I have the specifications. Here it is. And it allows you a receiving range of 150 meters. Now, keep in mind that 150 meters is line of sight. If you've got a wall, garage, factory, second floor, things like that, it's not going to be uh, 150 meters. You might get 70 meters. All right, so what happens is it needs a power supply. So there you see there's a 12 volt and a negative. So once you uh, juice this thing up with some uh, DC voltage, 12 or 24 and the negative, then you have these relay outputs. Now, this happens to be a one channel. The one I've, I've installed, I think, is a two or three channel. But nevertheless, what happens is we synchronize the remote so what will happen is you'll get a remote like this and you actually pair it is the right word to this uh, main board. And what happens is then once you've paired it, you can actually set the relay function to latch, meaning once you press the remote, it will be if it was on the or if the relay was uh, normally open, then it will go normally closed and stay normally closed. Another option is just a three second, uh, which means that once you press the panic button, the relay will stay closed for three seconds and there's also uh, other options like a one second option as well okay so just to have a uh, and, and some more products just so you are aware you can get better quality well not quality better uh, range this one is actually i think this is uh got uh what's this it says they're 1.5 kilometer so this is another one which uh i haven't used the 1.5 kilometer but i've used one which is a 400 meter and uh, also works very well, very reliable. Uh, this is the brand, it's Sherlatronics. Okay, so what happens is this is the frequency range and the voltage range that is required for the receiver and then the uh, current on transmit, the sleep mode. So just so you know, it's, uh, it still uses a little bit of current, 10 milliamps is very light uh, loading. And then this one happens to be four outputs. Okay, so... Why would you need a remote panic? Well, uh, you can see here, maybe uh, if someone is frail in a hospital, in a factory, a uh, person working in a mine, uh, maybe you live in a country with a high crime rate and you need it for your alarm system. Well, there are many reasons. And now I will go into showing you how to get this thing going. And I'll also show you two that are installed uh, and what they look like. Okay, so there's an example of a remote panic button. It's uh, here, for, especially for somebody who's frail, if something happens to them while they're in the bathroom, they can press the panic button. It's remote, uh, it's wireless, and that's one of the applications of the remote wireless panic button. Right, here's another example of a remote panic. You can see it's next to the distribution board. If there is an electrical issue or somebody needs help, there you see, wireless panic. Right, in this part of the video, I'm going to show you the a pairing process of the transmitters now these are waterproof transmitters which you can install around your gym or your factory or wherever it is and they will then be picked up by this remote receiver here is just the cover i've removed the cover this is the antenna and then the this is the relay contact now in the case that 
that you're seeing here there are two relays well, actually there are three relay this is a three relay board the one is for a siren and the other one is actually for the panic button it initiates a panic so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to pair these remotes now these are the shirletronic versions i've got these three remotes if i press them you can hear the click the beep but nothing is happening so what i'm going to do is i've got to pair it to the head unit or the remote receiver so to pair it it's actually quite easy all you need to do is press this this button here and then it will uh, an LED will light up on the uh, relay that uh, you want to uh, it to work on so I'm just un un uh, disconnecting this relay because I don't want it to initiate a panic while I'm doing it and there we go okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press the button here Right, so it's on relay one, that's correct. Now press and hold. There, done. Now I'll do it again. So what I have to do is I just have to press and hold. Okay, and I'll press it again. It's got it. And then when I press it again, <coughs> when I press it again, it does that do 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 which tells me that it's already been paired now i'll do it last one there it's got it done so now i've just paired these three remotes and what i can do is i can go out of that mode so i'm just right there we go now when i press it this relay should activate let's just check yeah i can see the led yes there we go and let's check this one yes and this one all working so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect it to the, I'm going to connect the panic in and I'm going to go and place them around the uh, property and I'm going to test them. Okay, so when I press this, it should initiate a panic on the alarm because that's how it's connected. This is a normally open relay uh, that's the way I've wired it and now when I press it, it will initiate a close and it will actually activate the panic on the alarm so let's test it yeah i can hear the alarm going off okay i thought i should just uh, talk a little bit about the wiring contacts now what you'll see here is a nc or normally closed and then a common now this is connected to the relay now this is the one channel one but the one that i did the video in happens to be three channels so it's just three of these things but anyway the point that i'm trying to make here is there's a normally closed and then there's a common and then there is another terminal called normally open so that means that it really depends on how your system is if you need the relay to be um in the normally closed position well then you will connect uh wire here and the common and then when you activate the board with your remote well then the relay will then open you see because it was normally closed and now it opens so maybe it was a, 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 a green light and then when you press the button the green light went off okay but mo in most cases especially with a panic it will probably be a normally open system and that means your common will be here and your wire will your other wire will come here to the normally open and when you press your panic then it will close the relay probably allowing current to flow and therefore a siren to be uh, activated or whatever it is that you're connecting your remote panic to if it's to an alarm system well that would probably also be the normally closed uh, some alarm systems prefer the normally open especially if it's a, a panic uh, but it really this is really depends on the alarm system and some of them want a terminating resistor a 3k3 resistor but anyway the point is is that you have the option of normally open normally closed and that's it so the panic remote or the remote activates the uh, relay and it doesn't only have to be for panic buttons you could use it to open a gate close a gate whatever it is switch on lights uh, switch off a geezer but then if you are going to use it for heating and uh, and cooling this relay will not be sufficient i think it's only five amps you will then need a 20 amp relay okay so that's it i hope this has been informative and maybe you can uh, find it easier to install panic buttons or or, or remote uh, devices so thanks for watching cheers